free is our favorite word, like free refills. At Morgan & Morgan, our <laughs> fee is free. You don't pay anything unless we win your case. Injured? Call Morgan & Morgan. ForThePeople.com. It's free! Hey, Jim Nagy from the Senior Bowl. Uh, now you're on year five here, year five. and you've had a lot of Kentucky football players over the last few years, particularly on the offensive line. Yeah. I'm curious, what is it about those guys that uh, you're drawn to that, that, that make them such quality NFL prospects? Well, they're tough players, first and foremost. Um, Drake Jackson's, you know, he's, out of, he's back coaching now. He's one of my favorite guys we've ever had. We can get to that story later. But, you know, they're just it's been a good lineage of guys. You know, Luke Fortner and uh, Logan Stenberg and, mm-hmm. and – it's been a really good position group. Yeah, and Kenneth Horsey, he's here this week at SEC Media Days. He yep. he could be uh, the next one up. And I know a lot of the talk is going to be around Will Levis. What are the, the attributes that, that, that make him such a, a hyped quarterback prospect this offseason? And I forgot Darren Kennard. That's yeah, another. yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Will's got all the tools. You know, you look back at last year's draft process and the same reasons people love Malik Willis are going to be the same reasons they love Will. You know, he's a big, strong guy. He's got a strong arm. He's mobile. He's not he's not quite as mobile as Malik was, but he can still move around and buy time and create second chances. So it, it's all that stuff. And he can throw with touch. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff on tape. You just want to see it come together more consistently, which I'm sure it will. You know, second full year in the system. So we're excited to see what, what the fall's going to look like. How, how is the, the scouting and evaluation process? How, how much is if it is uh, the tape versus the the – what the the other stuff if you will the kind Um, of for us it's basically all the tape right when you're an nfl team it's about a lot of the other stuff it's Mm -hmm. about the makeup of the player i mean we're i I feel like i work for the 32 teams so you know even some of the character stuff like even if guys have a couple issues we need to bring those guys to mobile and let the team spend a week with them i mean figure those Mm -hmm. questions out right so again we we don't want there's a couple non-negotiables when it comes to off the field behavior that we won't give in on um Mm -hmm. But for the most part, we're just concerned about what the player is on tape. Are there any other guys with UK that you, in particular, have your eye on this year that you're kind of interested to see how they progress? Uh, Kentucky guys? Yeah. I mean, just the whole senior class. want to give those guys a chance to rise up. You know, we've looked at all the junior stuff. Um, God, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. There's a, there's a bunch of the guys here. Yeah, know, yeah. A couple of the guys here. I uh, lost a good friend on that staff. John Summerall went to Troy. Right, um, right. He's been telling me about the linebacker for years and years. One of his favorite guys he's ever coached. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, we looked at the junior stuff. Now just let those guys afford them the opportunity to get better as seniors. Chris Rodriguez, is he's kind of like Benny Snell in that he's been a bell cow. Yeah. Is there something about being a bell cow back that – that doesn't lend itself to NFL success? That doesn't lend itself? Well, so if there, if it feels there's... like there's a lot of, like, we're going to take the guy that's more of a third down back and, and let him ride. Well, that's the league's kind of going to three-down skill set guys. I mean, it's hard to get them on the field if you don't play in the pass game because you're really showing your hand as a play caller if you have that guy in the field that everyone knows can't catch the football out of the backfield, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, the days of the first and second down running back are kind of in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, when, when it comes to the bell cow, I mean, the only concern is too much, you know, tread off the tire, if you will. Um, but to me, it shows a level of toughness, you know, and it... And it you know, he's given a team an identity on offense. I mean, I think there's some really good things to take away from a guy that's carried the ball a bunch. Um, but there's certainly pluses and minuses. So I, I, I know this isn't necessarily your forte, but I've asked a lot of people this week, who's who's the second best team in the East? Who's the second best team in the West? We know it's going to be Georgia and Bama. Who's the second best team behind them? Uh, you know, I think I think Tennessee, Arkansas, I think Florida could surprise some people just because I think Anthony Richardson, kind of like Will Levis, um, is super talented. I thought those two quarterbacks separated themselves at the Manning camp a few weeks ago when I was down there. Just from like a physical tools perspective, those two guys were kind of up here, and there was a little shelf to that next group of guys. Um, so I would say I would start with those. I would start with those places. Maybe Tennessee, Arkansas. That's fun though to be able to like you. You saw the guys' tools. Now it's like all right. Well, go do it on the football field now. Yeah, let's do it. Twenty or one other guys running around and a lot of moving parts. So yeah, <laughs> it's it's one thing to go to the Manning camp. You can get enamored with guys throwing the football, um, and that's a great setting to do it because they're getting good instruction. You're seeing how they're taking the coaching from the Mannings, um, but you gotta you gotta be reading coverage and putting the ball where it needs to be.